Today's episode is dedicated to my friend Paul in Tanzania. Now, when you see the content, I don't want you to assume the reason it's dedicated is because of the challenge it might be facing. No, this is dedicated just because he's my brother, he's faithful in what God has given him to do, and I just want to see him blessed. But today's episode, we're going to look at those times when you're doing what you think God has for you to do, and sometimes it's just hard work, and it just doesn't seem to be working. There doesn't seem to be any reward. Wouldn't it be great if we could say to people, serving God is so easy. Whatever we do, wherever we go, He just goes before us. He does all the work. We just, people even say, wow, look, God is with you. It would be such a blessing. I wish it was that way. But the reality is often we work at stuff for God, sometimes for what seems like a long time, with no apparent success. Sometimes it's a heavy burden you're carrying, you're battling through, and there doesn't seem to be a reward. Now, let me say, I, we're going to get back to that word reward. Why is that? Because today I'm going to share with you a story that frankly has intrigued me for years. I've always kind of loved this story. And, and part of it is a mental picture, the imagery, but here's what I want us to get from this story. What we're going to see is someone who doesn't know God, but is working for God. Now, they don't realize that. We will see that. And they battle, they carry this heavy burden for a long time with no apparent success. But what we see is how God says, hey, they worked for me, so here's how I'm rewarding them. And we're going to see that story. But what I want us to hopefully take away from this is, hey, this is someone who doesn't even know God. If God will do that for someone who doesn't even know Him, how much more will He do for you and I, His children? So we're going to look at this story today. And then I also want to challenge us at the end. So the story is in Ezekiel 29. And the context is, God has pronounced judgment against certain places, one of which is Tyre. And, and what do we see? Nebuchadnezzar has taken his army and he has marched on Tyre and finally overcome it. But it took them 13 years to do so. And here's, but here's where the story gets interesting. So what God says, starting in verse 18, Nebuchadnezzar took his army and they battled hard, okay? They, they struggled against Tyre. In fact, how much what says that of his army that every head was rubbed bald, every shoulder raw and blistered. Some translations, Good News uh, Bible says it this way, they toiled so hard. But what we see is, God goes on, he says, but they received no reward for all their effort. Uh, some translations say it this way, that there was no reward so that Nebuchadnezzar could compensate his army. In other words, they battled hard for 13 years. And, and, and when you really look at this story, verses 18, 19, and 20, they did, they battled hard. But even though they overcame Tyre, there was no reward in it. Now, here's where the story gets interesting. So, so God says through Ezekiel says, but, so they received no reward, but Nebuchadnezzar was working for me. See, Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilling God's will, fulfilling God's purpose, even though he didn't realize it. Now, I want us to hold that thought, and we're going to come back to that. But he fulfilled God's will and purposes, even though he had no clue. And so what does God say? So God says, now this is the faithfulness of God, and this is the principle for you and I to gather, that even when we don't see what appears to be success, and, and so what does God say? God says to Ezekiel for him to tell, proclaim, prophesy that God says, I am giving him the land of Egypt as a reward. Because why? Because he worked for me. Now, different translations, they all say the same thing, but they all basically, if you take all the translations, what they say, he will loot it, he will plunder it completely as compensation for his army. In other words, God doesn't reward him for working for him. Again, this I know I keep saying it, but this is mind-boggling. Think about it. Here's someone who doesn't know God, 
doesn't realize he's working for God, but God is so faithful. He says, not only am I going to reward him for what he does, he's not going to just get a little bit. I'm giving him Egypt. He will loot it. He will plunder it. Basically, he will take pretty much everything. That's the faithfulness of God. Now, so the point for me is, and I'm sharing with you is, if God will take someone, again, who doesn't know him, doesn't even realize he's working for him, but fulfills God's will and his purpose, and God has a reward, a, a, an abundant reward, waiting him. It just didn't come from the source they expected. But God in his faithfulness, whether it came from where they expected or not, God in his faithfulness had an abundant reward planned for Nebuchadnezzar. If you'll do that for Nebuchadnezzar, how much more for you and I? That there are times when, yeah, we're, it's a heavy burden. It takes a long time. It doesn't seem to be having success. Sometimes there are consequences and we're worn out. But God in his faithfulness has a reward planned for all of his people. And I say that, I dedicated this episode to my friend Paul. But there's lots of you out there doing stuff like this. And again, I'm not indicating, don't read the wrong thing into it, that Paul is out there with no success, that he's making no progress. Not at all. But the reality is, when you're serving God, wherever you are, whether you're with Paul in Tanzania, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in California, a friend of mine in Arizona, wherever you are, when we're serving God, even in those times when it just seems like we're, we're so long and we're not really seeing what appears to be success, we're, we're battling, we're carrying a heavy burden, God has a reward planned. And so it may not come from the source we expect. So what do we do? We just First off, we just have to trust we're doing God's will. We're fulfilling His purpose the best we know and understand. See, God does not require perfect understanding on our part. We just are doing what we know to do the best we understand and being faithful to it. And it's God's job to work out where the success comes from. It's God's job to sort out how progress is made and more importantly, where the reward comes from. So, but I do want to leave us with one challenge, and this is as much as possible. Now, this is in an ideal setting, and I know for most of us, I don't know that we'll ever get it completely. Maybe we can get it from time to time, but, you know, there's this great story at the end of Mark. Now, the, the Lord has been crucified, resurrected, and He's come back, and He's met with the apostles. And what does it say at the very end of Mark? Very last, it says, and the disciples went everywhere preaching the gospel. The Lord working with them, confirming His word with miracles. That's the ideal that I think we'd love, is to see the Lord, the Holy Spirit, guiding us in our efforts. And that we would see, that's, that's our prayer, that we would see the Lord working with us and we would see the evidence, we would see lives change, and we would see His miracles performed even in what we're doing. 